Welcome to Best Buds Gardening. I'm Julie. Today, let's talk about some common garden pests and what we can do about them. This is important because some of them can wipe out your entire garden in a week's time. It's heartbreaking to care for a plant and then all of a sudden you have something like this going on. This is spider mite damage. Spider mites multiply rapidly when it's hot and dry. They're so tiny, you almost need a magnifying glass to see them, but this is the damage they leave behind. Sometimes you can even see little spider webs under the leaves. Spider mites aren't picky about what kind of plants they eat. They'll eat any kind of plant you might be growing. Roses, eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, sunflowers. If you use an insecticide, it can actually double their reproduction. The best thing to do is use repeated doses of neem oil. You can also accidentally bring these guys indoors. They can hitch a ride on your shoes, clothing, or even your pet. This is a leaf. What? You don't see a leaf? Well, that's because most of it has been eaten away by a cabbage worm. Here was the leaf and all the holes left behind after the cabbage worm ate its breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you were to look on the underside of this leaf, you'd see some pretty horrifying big green worms. Again, neem oil or BT spray. I know we all like to be organic, but I guarantee you, when you find this, you'll care a lot less about trying to be organic. Ants. Now, ants in and of themselves aren't really a garden pest, although I did get some ants all over my hand the other day and they bit me. It took about three hours for the pain to go away. But the main problem with ants is it could mean you have aphids. Ants farm and ranch aphids the same way we humans farm and ranch cattle. Ants move the aphids around, milk them, and protect them. Sometimes aphids are even moved underground into the ants' homes for the winter. Usually you can control aphids by just spraying them off with a garden hose. But if you've got ants helping them out, it's a lot harder to control. You might have to get rid of the ants first. Oh, my goodness. Do you see that dead squash plant on the right side of the trellis? Just a bunch of dead brown leaves. It used to look like this, and a couple of weeks later, it looks like this. What could possibly have done that? Squash bugs. Squash bugs are referred to by most gardeners with a lot of profanity attached. These are almost impossible to get rid of. Ironically, the adults' backs are shaped like little shields. I think that's ironic because you can't kill the adults with any known pesticides. You have to physically remove them and drown them or spray them with soapy water. I spent hours every day in over 100 degree heat looking for these guys and spraying them and trying to drown them. I won many battles. The squash bugs, however, won the war. This is the dead honey nut squash plant they left before marching across the street to another plant. And this pumpkin plant was dead two weeks after this video was taken. Squash bugs will move over to whatever is available after they've killed your squash plants. Any kind of squash is up for grabs, including pumpkins. All right, now I'm going to show you the final common bug you might battle. If you're squeamish, look away. This is not for the faint of heart. Do you see all the damage on this tomato plant? If you see this going on, you only have a few days to discover the culprit before he totally wipes out your plant. Why just a few days? Because he's big. Really big. And can do a whole lot of damage in a very short time. I've saved the best for last. He's a master of disguise. And it can be really unsettling when you find him. Here he is. Tomato hornworm. Actually, I think this particular guy is a tobacco hornworm. It, it doesn't really matter. They're both so similar. They're interchangeable. This guy is five to six inches long. He started his life out as an egg laid by a hawk moth, which is nocturnal. A hawk moth will lay up to five eggs per plant. So then he hatched, and he's been voraciously feeding and growing bigger and bigger over the last month. He's now about fully grown, and he'll drop off the plant, burrow underground, and emerge as a new hawk moth. In Zone 6, there are two generations of these per year. The last generation will overwinter underground and emerge in the spring. I found eight of these this year on my two tomato plants, but they can also be present on any member of the nightshade family, including peppers and potatoes, eggplant. Most commonly, though, tomato plants. 
what you would want to do is simply pick him off and remove him. I don't know, to the middle of the street or something. They're supposed to be absolutely harmless to humans, but I want to tell you, I watched a video of one of these guys relentlessly trying to bite a human hand. So although they're harmless, I refused to play with them. I just removed my tomato plants. Well, I didn't remove them. I paid my yard guy a little extra to remove them. You know, my macho yard guy. One of the hornworms ended up on his shirt sleeve, and he screamed like a little girl. Well, that's fine, but then he started running. Well, the hornworm is on your sleeve. You're not running away from it. You're carrying it along with you. As fast as you run, it's right there. I wish I'd had my camera going. I laughed. The faster he ran, you know, it just didn't help. I think he mowed one more time after that, and then he quit. So now I have to find a new yard guy. I guess I'm not the only person that refuses to play with these huge caterpillars. And my yard guy's been with me for like 10 years, so I guess it really freaked him out. So if you're new to gardening and see any of the signs of damage I've described, start looking around for pests. This obviously isn't an all-inclusive list, but it'll give you a head start on some of the most common pests. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, you can buy me a coffee in the description box below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to see more gardening videos. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to see more gardening videos.